Hello everybody. So, based on the feedback, I recognize that the quality wasn't very good in the uh, live streaming. So, we'll try to do it as a recorded version and see how it works. We'll talk today in biochemistry. We'll talk about the vitamins. A very important topic. So we have the fat-soluble vitamins and we have the water-soluble vitamins. The fat-soluble vitamins are the A, D, E, and K, ADEC. Deficiency arises when there is malabsorption of fat, as in cystic fibrosis or pancreatic diseases. While in water-soluble vitamins, we have the B complex, and then we have also vitamin C. The B complex have the deficiencies of B complex uh, have something in common that they all cause dermatitis, glossitis, and diarrhea. So keep that in mind. We'll talk now about the first one, vitamin A. Let me adjust this. Okay. So vitamin A exists in many forms, has many names. One of them is retinol retinol, beta-carotene, and retinoic acid. It's very important for... It acts as an antioxidant, and it's very important for the skin, for the epithelial cells to specialize. So, that's why you use it in the treatment of acne. So, mild and moderate acne, we give tretinoin, which is topical. In severe acne, we give isotretinoin, which is an oral form. They're very teratogenic. Vitamin A is very teratogenic. So we have to make sure that there is a reliable contraception method. It acts there by decreasing the size and secretion from the sebaceous glands. That's why most patients complain of dryness. It might be used for the treatment of measles and for the M3 type of ML. So we say that it's very important for the eye. So it causes eye problems, it causes night blindness. It's, for, it's important for the skin, causing dry scaly skin and corneal degeneration and something called pitot spot, which is a dry silver spot on the bulbar conjunctiva. It's important for the immune system, causing immunosuppression. What's the toxicity or the side effects of vitamin A excess? So we have headache, nausea and vomiting, and increased intracranial pressure, which is called pseudotumor cerebri. So this is important to note. On the chron these are the acute effects of taking too much. The chronic effect, it can cause liver damage, it may cause hepatomegaly or even cirrhosis, and might cause some bone and joint pain. Okay, we'll talk now about vitamin B1, which is called thiamine. This is a very important vitamin, they like it very much. The active form is called thiamine pyrophosphate. So, because it's a cofactor in many reactions, many dehydrogenase enzyme reactions. We have to know these enzyme, enzymes and the, and the function of the enzyme and why it's important. So we'll start about pyruvate dehydrogenase, which links glycolysis to the TCA. So it's very important in glycolysis or glucose metabolism, converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. You can see that in the Krebs cycle. Alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, another very important enzyme, in the TCA cycle, or the Krebs cycle, converts alpha-ketoglutarate into succinyl-CoA, transketolase in the hexose monophosphate shunt, which transfers ribulose 5-phosphate into ribose 5-phosphate, G3P, and fructose 6-phosphate. Another important enzyme called branched-chain ketoacid dehydrogenase, which is very important in maple syrup urine disease as we're going to see later on. 
So we said it's very important in glucose metabolism. So what happens in the deficiency of thiamine, as we see in many alcoholics? There is impaired glucose metabolism, and it affects the brain. So two syndromes or two diseases that you have to know, Wernicke-Korsakoff and Beriberi. So what's Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? There's damage to the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus and mammillary bodies. So know these two. Medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus and mammillary bodies. These are the, the most prone to damage in this disease when there's time and deficiency. To call it a syndrome, you have to have a triad of confusion, ophthalmoplegia, and ataxia. There might be also something called confabulation. When there are memory gaps, they fill it with, uh, with anything that they make up. The beriberi has two components too. The dry beriberi, which affects the nerves, so affecting the myelin sheath, causing foot drop, wrist drop, or neuritis, and the wet beriberi that affects the heart. It causes vasodilatation and then causing high output heart failure or cardiomyopathy. So dry beriberi affects the nerves, wet beriberi affects the heart. As we said here in transketolase, some, sometimes they use it, use this enzyme to detect the deficiency. So when we give vitamin thiamine, there is increase in this enzyme activity, which they can measure. The RBC is transketolase. So let's go to vitamin B2, riboflavin. It has two forms. Flavin, mononucle flavin, monon flavin adenine dinucleotide and flavin mononucleotide. FAD and FMN. It's also used as, cofact as a cofactor in redox. Redox reactions are dehydrogenase reactions too. So one, exa one example here that you need to know is succinate dehydrogenase, which is used to convert succinate into fumarate within the Krebs cycle too. So know this. I, th I think that's in the U world. The deficiency, as we said, uh, the deficiency here is chelosis, which is inflammation of the lips or the corners of the mouth and corneal vascularization. Okay. Niacin. We'll talk about niacin now. She is also a very important enzyme. Uh, sorry, very important vitamin. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Okay. So NAD and NADP, they're also used in redox reactions, as we said, dehydrogenase reaction. One thing to note here that the relationship to tryptophan, it is derived from the amino acid tryptophan. So anything affecting tryptophan metabolism will affect vitamin B3. It is used in uh, hyperlipidemias. It is used in dyslipidemias. It increases the HDL, decreases LDL. It is used also, one of the side effects that it causes flushing reaction, which can be avoided by taking aspirin. 30 minutes before that. This is the excess. The deficiency, what happens in the deficiency? One of the very classical or very uh, classical things that happen, which is pellagra. The three Ds. Der diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. The dermatitis happens, as we see in this photo, in the sun-exposed area, and it is mostly in the color distribution and other sun-exposed areas. What's heart knob disease? Heart knob disease affects tryptophan metabolism, so it may cause it. Or, as we said, 
Anything that affects tryptophan metabolism can cause niacin deficiency. Carcinoid syndrome uses tryptophan, increases tryptophan metabolism, so it may cause the deficiency. I and H affect both vitamin B3 and vitamin B6, we'll talk about, which we'll talk about later. So isoniazid. We talked about the excess. We'll talk now about vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. What we have to know here, it's also a coenzyme, an acyl, it, it is used a cofactor for acyl transfer, coenzyme A. So oxaloacetate into citrate. Know this reaction here. But it's also used in other things. It is very important for vitamin A, vitamin D, cholesterol, steroid, fatty acid, amino acid, protein. So you might know that's important for this all. The deficiency is not very important here. The adrenal deficiency might be very specific, but it's not specific. The vitamin, it's one of the vitamin B complex deficiency that we talked about earlier. Vitamin B6. We'll talk pyridoxin. That's an important one. It's converted into pyridoxal phosphate, PLP, which is a cofactor in transaminases. They like this. ALT and AST. And also, it has also so many functions. Decarboxylation reactions, glycogen phosphorylase, which causes McArdle's disease. You might want to know that for later. And synthesis of many Neurotransmitters, serotonin, epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, and GABA. GABA is important here. We'll talk about it. The deficiency, just like vitamin B2, as we said, plus it causes convulsion and high convulsions and hyper irritability because there is low GABA and it affects the nerve, so peripheral neuropathy too. We said that INH, isoniazid, affects both vitamin B6 and vitamin B3. We usually supplement this when giving isoniazid. We'll talk now about vitamin B7 or biotin. So what do you remember about biotin? That it's the relationship with carbon dioxide. So it's a cofactor for carboxylation. What are the carboxylations? Pyruvate carboxylase, any carboxylase, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, propionyl-CoA carboxylase, which is uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, is the rate-limiting enzyme in fatty acid synthesis. So it's important to know it here. The deficiency is rare, but sometimes some antibiotics can have it. So the important thing to know here is the carbon dioxide, the carboxylase, that it's a cofactor for carboxylation reactions, adding carbon dioxide, uh, adding a carbon atom or a carbon group. Vitamin B9, folate, one of the very important ones. You'll see me, you hear me saying that a lot in this section. They're all very important. We talked briefly about this, that it converts tetrahydrofolate. It is, it is converting tetrahydrofolate. It's important for the synthesis of DNA and RNA. So it's very important for the rapidly dividing cells. It is found in the green leafy vegetables and absorbed in the duodenum. Vitamin B12 is in the terminal ileum, so not the difference, because we'll compare vitamin B9 to vitamin B12 now. The deficiency, any rapidly dividing cells that need a lot uh, are going to be affected. So 
the RBCs, it causes macrocytic megaloblastic anemia with a hypersegmented nucleus. As we said, we're going to compare it to vitamin B12. There, is, there are no neurological symptoms here. We'll talk about it later. So the deficiency can, can happen due to several drugs that affect, that affect it, which is phenytoin, sulfonamides, and methotrexate. It's very important to supplement vitamin B9 or folate to the pregnant mothers as the fetus is something that needs increased amounts of folate to decrease the risk of neural tube defects. Alcoholism and pregnancy are the most common groups affected by uh, vitamin B9 deficiency or folate deficiency. You have to contrast this to vitamin B12 or cobalamin. Okay. So, vitamin B12 it converts homocysteine into methionine. That's the tetrahydrofolate using homocysteine methyl transfer is for the methyl group. So, as we said, it's very important for conversion of homocysteine methionine, the homocysteine methyl transferase, and methylmalonyl CoA mutase, which converts methylmalonyl CoA into succinyl CoA. It is found in animal products, and there is a very large deficiency. So vegans or that, that, that don't take supplements may have a deficiency, but it's stored in the liver for, the liver has a very large reserve pool in the liver. Malabsorptions, deficiency usually arises, as we said, when somebody is, is vegan, insufficient intake or malabsorption or something that they like is lack of intrinsic factor. So intrinsic factor is very important which is produced by the parietal cell is very important for the absorption. So lack of intrinsic factor as in pernicious anemia or removal of the part that has the parietal cells, gastric bypass, or the terminal ileum, which is the site of absorption. These all cause a deficiency. We use anti-intrinsic factor antibodies to diagnose pernicious anemia. So in deficiency, we say that it's similar to vitamin B9, that it causes macrocytic or megaloblastic anemia. But there's something that's different here, that it affects the nerves here. So it causes something called subacute combined degeneration of the dorsal and lateral column. It affects the myelin. How do we diagnose it here? Increased level of homocysteine, because it cannot be converted to methionine and increased methylmalonic acid levels. We'll talk now about vitamin C, ascorbic acid, which is also which is an antioxidant. It reduces iron, makes it easier to absorb. That's why we say take an orange juice with iron. It's very important for the collagen. So hydroxylation of proline and lysine. We talked about this. It's necessary also for dopamine. It converts dopamine into norepinephrine. So what, what are the deficiencies? The deficiency causes something called scurvy. There's swollen gums, bruising, petechia, hemorrhage, poor wound healing. So, scurvy due to collagen synthesis defect, vitamin C deficiency. 
the excess nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, iron toxicity. It's not very important the excess, but know the deficiency, scurvy, and know the functions of vitamin C, antioxidant and reducing for facilitating iron absorption and the role in collagen, which is very important. Now we'll talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D exists in many forms. So vitamin D2 exists in plants, ergo calciferol, vitamin D3, which is produced by the, sin, by the skin in exposure to the sunlight or can be given in milk, colicalcephal. So what happens here that vitamin D, the, it is converted, vitamin D2, by the liver, 25-hydroxylase enzyme into 25-hydroxy-vitamin D3, the vitamin D3 that we're given from the skin. And then by the kidney, alpha-hydroxylase again into 125-hydroxy-vitamin D3, calcitriol, which is an active form. What's the function of vitamin D? It mainly increases calcium and phosphate. So what happens? By How does it do that? It increases the intestinal absorption of calcium and phosphate. And it increases also absorption of calcium from the kidneys. What happens in the deficiency? something called rickets. So when there is low vitamin D, there is demineralization. How does it happen? There is decreased absorption of calcium and phosphate from the intestine, so low serum calcium. And increased, what happens is that the parathormone hormone increases and it calls in it tries to increase the serum calcium by breaking the bone, so causing bone demineralization and increasing the phosphate or a decreasing. It's a phosphate trashing hormone, so decreasing. So this is wrong. So we said rickets or osteomalacia in adults. Note that breast, the breast milk. It's not a very good source of calcium, so we give infants who are exclusively breastfed vitamin D supplements. The excess, the important thing to know is that in certain granulomatous diseases, a sarcoidosis, the macrophage increases the activation of vitamin D, so it may cause excess. Okay. We'll talk now about vitamin E. So, tocopherol, it's an antioxidant, protects the RBCs from damage by free radicals. So what happens in deficiency? Hemolytic anemia. Note here that it's cytochrome P450 inhibitor and it enhances the anticoagulant effect of warfarin. Okay. Vitamin K. Vitamin K is very important for the coagulation factors. So it's a cofactor for gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid of various blood clotting factors synthesized by intestinal flora. And the clotting factors are 1972. You can try to memorize them and protein C and protein S. Warfarin is the antagonist of vitamin K. Uh, other anti uh, antagonists are some anticonvulsants, anticonvulsants as phenytoin and, and certain antibiotics. 
The deficiency in units, because they have sterile, because it's synthesized in the intestine and they have sterile flora or sterile intestine, so that's why we give them vitamin K when they're born. It decreases PT and PTT. Okay? It can also occur, as I said, prolonged use of broad spectrum antibiotics, but neonatal hemorrhage is a very classical example. For zinc, I think what we need to know that it helps in healing, helps the immune system, and that's it. So the deficiency delays wound healing and uh, hypogonadism. I don't think it's very high yield to the zinc deficiency. So let me think what let me know what you think about this and if you prefer going to the live or the recorded. Thank you very much and good luck.